Your tracker comes equipped with the required running lights to operate between sundown and sunrise. At the bow, you'll find a red-green combination light, or sometimes separate colored lights, red on the port or left side of the boat as you face forward, green on the starboard or right side. At the stern is a white light. All three of these lights must be turned on anytime you are underway between dusk and dawn so that other boaters can see you and be aware of your course. Some bigger boats might have permanently mounted running lights. If not, they'll have plug-in running lights mounted on metal tubes. Open the cover, align the screw head on the tube with the slot in the light base, and push the tube until the light seats itself on the connections. Now secure the tube with the locking connector by turning it clockwise and down. Check the lights to make sure they operate. Push the running light switch to the nav position, which will turn on both bow and stern lights, as well as the instrument lights on the console. If lights are not working, do not operate your boat between sundown and sunrise until they are repaired. If you stop to fish or rest after dark, turn the running light switch to the anchor position. This turns off the bow lights, but leaves the stern light on so that other boaters can see you. The color combination of lights you see on another boat at night indicate the direction they are traveling relative to your path or position. If you only see a white light, the boat is either going away from you or is at anchor. If you see a white and a green light, the boat is passing from left to right. If you see white and red, the boat is passing from right to left. If you see both red and green, the boat is coming towards you. Operating after dark is far more risky than running during daylight. Go slow, keep a sharp watch, and wear your PFD at all times if you must run at night. Make sure you have a powerful flashlight or spotlight to spot channel markers, debris, docks, etc. Most boats have an electric bilge pump activated by a bilge pump switch. These pumps are located in the lowest part of the boat where any water that comes aboard from rain, waves, condensation, leaks, or other sources will collect. Some models are equipped with an automatic bilge system that senses water and turns on automatically. Ask your dealer if your boat is so equipped or if one can be added as an option. Automatic bilge systems are turned on by a float switch that activates the pump whenever water rises above a preset level and turns it off when the water has been removed. If a float switch becomes inoperative or you don't have one, you must activate the bilge pump with a switch on the panel. Only allow the pump to run until the water is gone. If the pump runs dry, it's likely to burn out and require replacement. It's common for a few inches of water to be found in the bilge. This is normal on all boats and not cause for concern. Large amounts of water in the bilge, on the other hand, may indicate a serious leak or other problem. If you discover more than a few gallons of water in the bilge, turn on the bilge pump to remove it and head for shore to check out where it's coming from. An automatic bilge pump requires little attention from the operator, except that the pump screen and the area around the float switch must occasionally be cleaned to prevent debris from blocking their operation. Check its operation regularly, and particularly when leaving the boat in the water for extended periods. The float switch is wired directly to the battery, so it will turn on even if the main battery switch is turned off, but if left too long, the bilge pump will run the battery down. That can get ugly. Remember that the automatic bilge pump is not foolproof. A dead battery, a broken wire, or a clogged float switch can render the automatic pump inoperative. It's a nice system to have, but does not relieve you of the responsibility to keep the boat afloat. Leaving a boat in the water unattended, particularly for extended periods of time, is asking for trouble. Your boat may have come equipped with a bow-mounted trolling motor. If so, it has its own operator's manual, which you should read and understand before operating it. Trolling motor propellers can be dangerous. Since most are operated by either a connected foot switch or a wireless remote, they can be inadvertently turned on at the wrong time. It's a good idea to keep the switch off or the unit unplugged when not in use. The trolling motor is usually powered by its own deep cycle battery or sometimes two or even three. Isolating the trolling motor batteries protects the main batteries from being inadvertently discharged, leaving you and your crew stranded. But because these batteries are isolated from the main engine system and are not automatically recharged by the engine's electrical system, you'll need to recharge the trolling motor batteries using a portable or onboard charger at the end of the day. 
The onboard system is the simplest to use. Simply plug it into an outlet. Check with your tracker dealer or service center to acquire the system if you don't already have it installed. Hooking up jumper cables or a portable battery charger can create sparks and ignite explosive gases. Open the compartment to allow venting during charging and follow the instructions provided with the charger carefully to avoid danger. Red, positive, black, negative. Don't get these backwards. Crossing the positive terminal with any grounded metal will cause a short circuit and lots of sparks. Not a good scenario in a closed compartment where there might be residual gasoline or oil in the bilge. The live well, if you're so equipped, also runs off the main battery system. The outside water is drawn in via an electric pump and excess water overflows through an overflow tube. If that tube becomes clogged with debris, you could be pumping water directly into the boat. Some systems have an additional pump to drain the well, so that needs to be checked too. In fact, all hoses and clamps to and from the live well system should be checked regularly and replaced or tightened if necessary. Excessive live well operation without either charging the batteries or running the boat to charge the batteries could leave you with plenty of fish but no way to get them home. As you may have surmised by now, the battery system is pretty important to the operation of your boat. At least twice a year, check the fluid level and clean the terminals if necessary. Distilled water is best for refill, but remember to not overfill. Leave a little space for heat expansion. Your steering system will either be a cable-driven mechanical system, or you might have hydraulic steering. Check for smooth and easy operation. Lubricate the cables monthly and check fittings for tightness on the mechanical system. With hydraulic steering, it's best to have the system serviced by your tracker service center twice a year or any time you notice steering becoming either spongy or erratic. There are refill kits available, but if you're losing hydraulic fluid, you should have a trained service tech check it out. Also, check the throttle shift lever for smoothness and lubricate the cable at least twice a year. And look over the fuel system regularly, making sure all connectors are tight. There should be no smell of gasoline in the tank area when the vent is closed. Hoses that are cracked or flaking must be replaced. Regularly check the functions of your electronics. Some of these combo units with GPS and sonar can be pretty complicated, so make sure you're familiar with their features and their operation. Preferably twice a year, but at least once a year at the beginning of your boating season, your engine and systems will need a checkup and some routine maintenance. Follow the maintenance schedule that came in your owner's manual for items such as spark plugs, oil change and oil filter, fuel filter, impeller, lower unit oil, and overall lubrication. Failure to maintain your engine may cause a malfunction while you're far from the dock. Improper maintenance can also void your warranty, so don't overlook this important aspect of boat ownership.